All right, Anabolic Academy. If anybody out there gives a shit, I feel so much better. I was sick for like two weeks. I had the flu, and then I had a bad head cold, and I was just a disaster. And last week, I was just killing myself again through Anabolic Academy and Muscle Talk. If you notice, I wasn't, I wasn't myself, but now I'm back. I feel 10 times better, and we're ready to rock and roll for 2024. This is Anabolic Academy on Series and Selling Bodybuilding. This is the show where you send me questions either on Instagram, Serious and Selling on Instagram. Email me, John underscore Livia at Yahoo. Email me on my other email address, UncleJohn1201 at Gmail. Or just if you see me, ask me. Other than that, I don't know what to tell you. But I am ready to get into some questions. So we have plenty of questions. The first question comes from Ryan78 on Instagram. How long have you been at your current day job and has it ever conflicted with your training? Well, I've been at my current day job for 20, it's 2024. Wow, it'll be 13 years. Wow, been there a long time. Yeah, it happens all the time. You know, it's like, uh, you know, hey, we need guys for overtime tonight. And do I turn down time and a half or do I go to the gym? And most of the time, I don't turn down time and a half. You know, you got to make a living. But that being said, look, I'm not a pro bodybuilder, right? Paying the bills and making a living comes first. So that's normally what I do. Now, when I was competing, there was a point where I was competing. And the last show I did was in 2014. I believe it was 2014. Wow. 10 years ago. already. Wow. Yeah. And uh, during that time when I was in that uh, prep, I would not do one hour of overtime because I had to train and go to the gym. And was it worth it? I look back on it. Not really. Because it's like. All right, great. I did the show and uh, it was in Brooklyn Grand Prix and NPC show, right? It was a local show. And uh, yeah, I won the Masters, came in fifth in the in the Open, but I turned down all that money. But, you know, you live and you learn. And look, man, if you are going to be, if you are going to be a bodybuilder, you know, early on, people are going to tell you early on that you could really make it. But right? like this is young kid. From Long Island. He just won the teen universe. Justin, he was on once before. Hold on. I will get his name for you. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. It is Justin Greenberg. Kids, you know, won the NPC Masters, uh, Masters, listen to me, Teenage Nationals. He won the Teenage Nationals last year. And he's only, what, 18, 19? Kid looks phenomenal. He has a future in bodybuilding. He has the possibility of being a professional bodybuilder and making a living doing that, right? I didn't. Let's face it, okay? So I did it uh, out, of a, out of love, out of a hobby, and it is what it is. I am very glad and very happy when I decided I wasn't going to do bodybuilding anymore. I missed the sport, but then... This podcast fulfills that uh, emptiness. I didn't know, like for a little while, I was like, man, maybe I want to train people. I don't really know. Uh, I was working backstage behind behind the uh, behind the scenes in the NPC. They needed expediters. I would volunteer to do it on the weekends because you know, I just love bodybuilding and I wanted to be around it. And um, but this podcast um, is is ten times more fulfilling for me than actually competing. Because I'm better at this than actual competitive bodybuilding. All right. So uh, let's see. That was the first question. Now, okay. And the rest of the questions are all from, you guessed it, Fran is the man. So any tips on how to prevent a bloated stomach and keep a tight midsection? Yeah. I mean, I did not. There are ways, right? And 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 one of the best ways is to practice a, um, is, to, is continuously practicing a vacuum and there are exercises and there are strategies to practice a vacuum and a vacuum definitely helps keep your stomach from bloating and so on and so forth uh, you know and everything else is you know uh diet oriented and then there's like there's also a there's also a breathing strategy again guys i, I you know i wish i i would have done more uh, research on this question but i just i'm doing this off the top of my head there's also a breathing strategy when you squat and when you deadlift to keep your uh, stomach from bloating and 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 increasing the the, the thickness, I, I don't know the strategy because I never practice it. But I know these things are out there: the breathing strategy and 
the um, practicing a vacuum definitely helps to keep your stomach from bloating and keep a nice lean waistline. And obviously everything else is, you know, nutrition and both the food that you, you take in. All right. Next question for honest demand, best exercise for abs. I mean, basically I like to use the, the giant ball and lay on it and have the ball to small on my back and do crunches on the ball. Anything that isolates your, your, your abs crunches. There are certain machines that help. I mean, the, um, the rope, you know, uh, crunch pull downs on your knees uh, are, are really good. Uh, there's plenty of them. I don't really use a lot of weight. Usually I keep it at moderate weight because you always try to want to have that lean, that lean, you know, waistline. So to have, you know, your, your, your abs are muscles just like anything else. So if you, if you do too much weight, you know, it can give you a bloated, hard, thick waistline. Right. So I try to keep it leaner. And that was always my drawbacks was as I got older, my waistline, like I had a thick waist as I got older. So when I started doing masters contests, I didn't have the perfect V taper. I did when I was like in my twenties. Right. And that was always my weakness. So, you know, the tips that I got along the way were these tips, you know, practice a vacuum, do a lean, do abs with a very lightweight or no weight at all, uh, things like that. All right. What's the craziest post contest binge you did? All right. So here's the thing. My first contest, nobody told me about post contest rebound. So after I was done dieting, I was just eating and eating and eating. And I don't even remember how much I ate, but I remember I put like 30 something pounds on in a few days and I didn't understand what was happening. I was like, wow, I didn't realize that I I put like 35 pounds on like three days or something like that. I remember I went to my doctor. I'm like, what's going on? And I told him that. And he had no experience with bodybuilding. And he sent me to the emergency room, right? And then like, once I, they released me from the emergency room, the biggest thing that they were, were on their minds was my kidneys because of the giant weight loss. But once they found out that my kidneys were fine, then I talked to the guys in the gym and they were like, yeah, you know, this is common. It happens. You know, you have to kind of slowly go back to eating normal. Otherwise, you know, it's going to, it's going to, you know, get, get, you know, worse and worse and worse. Uh, so yeah, the worst thing that ever happened is I wound up in the emergency. But as I get older, you know, I was able to control it a little bit better. But don't get me wrong. Like, you know, when I did my, the last couple of shows, that I did in 2012 and 2014, um, you know, as soon as I was done with the contest, I went and ate. But then the next few days, I took time to eat back to normal. But that first time, it was like, I remember I had a girlfriend and she was coming over the next night and I asked her to stop and get me McDonald's. (laughs) Poor poor girl. She was such a sweetheart too. And of course, I was not at the time. All right, next one. Is there any specific way of training to help speed up muscle maturity? Not really. Muscle maturity is pretty much self-explanatory maturity comes in time. It's not really much you could do if you're training, right. And you're training, you know, heavy weight with a lot of reps, you know, that muscle maturity is going to come. I mean, obviously some people will probably get it faster than others. Like you'll like, you'll look at Nick Walker. The guy's not even, what is he 30, you know? And when he was 27, he looked like he, he had the muscle of a 50 year old, you know what I mean? He, he, you know, it was just, unbelievable right um but then there are guys like you know Derek Lunsford and it's it's taking time for him to have that muscle maturity or Regan Regan Grimes same 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 thing it takes time most of the time it takes time you know a guy like Nick Walker who just you know looks like you know Branch Warren in his heyday overnight you know it's just it's just a freak of nature you know he's one of the 0.0001 percent of the population that looks like that you know it's just He's just a blessed bodybuilder. That's really it. But yeah, there's really not much you could do about it. You just got to keep, you know, banging the weights, banging, banging, but that's it. The reps and the heavyweight and so on and so forth. And it'll come. How would a prime flex wheeler do against today's competition? Once again, uh, he wouldn't do good. <clears throat> he would be too small. Um, flex wheeler in his prime will probably do better as a, he's kind of, he's kind of, he's kind of caught in the middle. You know, prime flex wheel, like 98, 99, that's what I look like at a prime flex wheel. Like some people like his like, you know, mid 90s look better. Uh, the mid 90s, mid 90s look, he would look, he would do great as a classic physique guy. But in 98, 99, when he came out really full and really thick, and he had that beautiful structure. He was kind of, he would be caught in the middle in today's competition. He would have wonderful structure and people would be like, if he could just put some more weight, uh, muscle on. He could be Mr. Olympia. He could be an all classic winner, you know, kind of like how 
Samson Dowdle was when he first came around. He's like, wow, this guy could be really be good if he could, you know, put some more weight on. Look, it's bodybuilding, okay? And <clears throat> it's like anything else. It's very difficult to compare the athletes of yesteryear to today. Uh, the guys weren't as big. They weren't as hard, right? Well, let me rephrase that. The guys weren't as big, so some of them were really, really shredded. But the guys today, they're bigger, they're harder, they're rounder. And it's 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 fun to talk about, like how would Flex do in today's, you know, you're going to get people to go, oh, Flex would wreck everybody. Eh, that's just, that's just, that's an emotional answer, right? That's like, you know, Muhammad Ali would beat everybody in the heavyweight division today. It's an emotion, it's emotional answer. You know, Muhammad Ali was like 210 pounds, you know, the heavyweights today are very big and are very athletic and long, really long reaches. They're six foot five, they're six foot four, they're 250 pounds. They're big dudes. Anyway, so it's a fun conversation, but a lot of times the answers become emotional. But if you really break it down, you can't, and you can't go by pictures. You know, you can't go by pictures. How many times have we lined up bodybuilders together and you see them on stage and you're like, well, it's, you know, so a prime flex wheeler, in my opinion, today would win things like maybe a New York pro or a Chicago pro or a Cali pro. And then when he got on stage with the big boys at an Arnold Classic or the Olympia, then he would be considered a smaller bodybuilder and he would lose to the Sampsons, the Andrew Jacks, the Hotties, the Derek Lunsfords, and so on and so forth. That's that's my opinion. Next question from Finals the Man, of course. Prediction of how Carlos Thomas Jr. will do in 2024. Will he win a pro show? Okay, here's my... Honest opinion about Carlos Thomas Jr. As if I'm going to give you a dishonest opinion, but at this point, you should know me better than that. Anyway, Carlos Thomas Jr. has all the tools to be a top tier, elite, top five bodybuilder in the world. This year in 2023, I was a little disappointed because he did his first pro debut and he came in soft and he still did good. He held his own. I think he came in third. If I'm not wrong, I don't remember the show, but I know he broke the top five. He either came in third or fourth. I don't remember. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. And then I'm like, he's 10% off. He's 10% off and he could be winning. And I'm like, in my head, I'm going, just do, do the next show. You're, you're right there. What are you going to do? Diet down a little harder? Do more cardio? You know, right there. You're right there. Just you're 10% off. And then he went right back into his off season. So I'm questioning his work ethic. I don't know if he has people around him that say, you, you, you better get busy. Otherwise, you're going to be one of these bodybuilders that people are going to give up on. You know, and there are bodybuilders like that, that people go, oh, he's in the mix, but he's not a factor. You don't want to be one of those guys. You know, Carlos has all the tools in the world. Now, I know he has cheerleaders in his corner. Again, again, I'm speculating here, okay? I know I know, I was friendly with them for a long time. We haven't spoken a little bit. No, no, we have no problem or anything like that. It's just, it happens, right? I know we were friendly for a long time. He was on my show for many weeks and he's a great guy and his father's a great guy. And I know he has a lot of support and he has a lot of cheerleaders on his team, but I don't know if he has anybody to say, oh, you got to get cracking because this, this, this physique's not winning. I don't know. I don't know if he's got anybody doing that because, you know, sometimes you need a reality check, right? And there are uh, sometimes bad news is a reality check. And if everybody around you is telling you, oh, you look great, you look wonderful, you're, well, that's, you're going to think that. You know, you're living in a bubble and then you're on stage and you get your ass handed to you and you go, like, I don't know if this is the case, but I'm I'm speculating, right? But it seems to me that he has all the tools in the world to be a top five bodybuilder in the world. But I'm starting to question his work ethic. That's it. I want him to prove me wrong for 2024. If he gets down and dirty and he grinds and he gets as shred as he possibly can, he can win any show. Without any show, he puts himself in, with the exception of obviously the Arnold Classic and the and the Olympia, right? But any show he decides he's he's going to do the New York Pro, Chicago, Toronto, whatever. If he gets down and dirty and gritty and digs deep, he could destroy anybody on that stage because he has all the tools. The man has no weaknesses in his structure. He just he's got to get that hard. Hard, grainy, lean, hard fucking body. All right. Next question. Once again, from Fran is the man, because he is the man. If Sebum, Hadi Chupin, and 
and Derek Lunsford drop Hani as a coach and hire you instead, would you quit your day job? No, because I'd be fired within a week <laughs> by all three of them. I can't hold a handle to Hani Ramrod. Are you nuts? All right, let's see. Next question. Will there ever be a multiple Olympia champ again, like Arnold, Haney, Dorian, Ronnie, and Phil? I hope so, right? And I think there will be sooner or later. Sooner or later, somebody comes along, you know, and 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 holds that status and raises the bar like a Dorian or Ronnie. And they were like, I guarantee you guys hated them backstage. Like this motherfucker. But it's very, you know, the Olympia is very fun now because you don't know who's going to win. And that makes it really interesting. But at the same time, there's something to be said about the man that nobody could beat. There's a, and as a fan, there's always a little bit of pride in that because it's like, that's our champion and you can't beat our champion. Right. And that's how I looked at Ronnie Coleman as a bodybuilding fanatic. I was like, Ronnie is the man. He is our as a bodybuilding fan, he is my champion and I look up to. And there's something there's something to be said about that. But it is a hell of a lot more fun when you don't know who's going to win, right? Like this year was great. I love this year's Olympia. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Thought the top three was fantastic. Next question from Fran is the man. Let's go, phone. Hey, let's go, fucking iPhone. Let's go. Okay. Is there a competitive sport where having a bodybuilding background helps their performance? Well, I would, I would probably, probably, you know, another power sport, right? Like a powerlifting or a strongman, arm wrestling. And you see it with, what's his name? Larry Wheels. You know, he's always in those power sport circles. And he always does that, you know, bounces around, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, if you guys haven't noted, if you guys didn't know, there was a arm wrestling tournament uh, this weekend and he was present. He was there. And uh, actually he was there with, CT Fletcher, CT Fletcher, and it was good to see CT uh, to see CT Fletcher up and out and and healthy, you know, because he had you know some health problems with his heart and whatnot, and um, he was there. So he, yeah, I would say the power sports thing, you know. If Sam Sulik was a prison inmate, would he still be as big and jacked on a prison diet? Yeah, did you ever see those motherfuckers that fucking come out of jail? Jesus Christ, man, they're fucking jacked. You know, it's like they got nothing else better to do. But the, and you really think like, look, man, the guy, the you know, the alphas that are in prison, they they don't just stick to a prison. They, uh, they get they get their food. You know, I'm sure they're not eating you know ten thousand calories a day, but I'm sure the guys that pull weight in prison have no problem putting some food away. If that makes sense, right? Uh, yeah, because he eats like trash anyway, from what I could tell, and he's he looks great. So yeah, I, I think Sam Sul- Sam Sulik is the kind of guy that he was just he's he, he's a hyper responder. He looks at weights and he grows. His form is terrible. His nutrition is terrible, and the guy still looks amazing. He is what everybody wishes they could be. You know, to eat what you want, train the way you want, and then you're fucking jacked. And, and he's probably the only person on the planet that could do it. You know who was like that? Who was the guy that passed away? He trained during the golden era with with Schwarzenegger, with Schwarzenegger uh, Brown, Larry Larry Brown. Is that was it? Was that was his name? I, I believe it was Larry, Larry Brown. Uh, let me see. Let me look it up real quick because he was from Staten Island, and I remember when I lived in Staten Island. If it's the right, if I got the right guy, I think it's Larry Brown. But let me just make sure. He was like that. He was the kind of guy that he he would literally. Uh, let me see if I got it right. Leon Brown. Not Larry Brown, Leon Brown. I'm sorry. Leon Brown was like that. And uh, Leon was from Staten Island. He was like that. And I remember I used to go to the same gym as him. It was called uh, Pump and Iron. It was a small, hardcore gym. And he used to do chest and buys every day. Every time he was there, he did chest and buys. Never did legs, never did back. What are you doing, Larry? Chest and, uh, and, and, and he didn't work out hard. Like he didn't. And the guy looked phenomenal. Even at late, even into his later years, he looked phenomenal. He had a, a bit of a, a body odor problem. But other than that, the guy looked phenomenal. And he did not kill himself in the gym. He was like, he was like a Sam Sulik that could do anything. He just looked looked amazing, you know. And he was the he was the nicest guy in the world. And I think he was the guy that actually gave Akeem Williams a start. I think either him or his wife. The story goes that him or his wife were in Brooklyn. I think it was his wife that was in Brooklyn and noticed him on the bus or the train. 
and said, you know, my, my husband is a, as a bodybuilder, you know, he could really help you. And I think he hooked him up and I don't remember who Leon brought him to. Leon might've brought him to Dave Palumbo. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure it was either Leon or Leon's wife that helped Akeem Williams with his career. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty sure. He was the nicest guy in the world. He was the friendliest guy in the world. And Arnold had tremendous loyalty to all his friends growing up from the bodybuilding world. And he used to give him free tickets to the Arnold every year. Yeah, that, that much I know because he told me because <laughs> we know each other from the gym. All right, next question. Where are we? It was the Sam Sulik question. And now it is, oh, which previous podcast guest do you want most to have a repeat interview? Well, I automatically go to Jay Cutler because I had him on once. And of course, I tried reaching out to him again a couple of times after that. But, you know, he's Jay Cutler. I wasn't able to get a hold of him after the first time. But, you know, the fact that he did my show once is a blessing, right? How many people could say one of the greatest bodybuilders ever did my show? I I, I would, but, you know, because I was thinking about that question today. So Jay Cutler, but there was so many, there was so many other people that were so interesting on the bodybuilding world that I would love to have back. Alicia Young was so interesting because she's this bodybuilder who still is very feminine, she has a very beautiful face. She has this long blonde hair, very muscular. And she has embraced the fetish side completely. And she makes no bones about it. And it was such an interesting, interesting uh, interview that I would love to have her on for a second time. Uh, every once in a while, I reach out to her, but you know, she, and she answers me back and she goes, yeah, I'm busy right now, blah, blah, blah. But I would love to have her back because she was always, she was very nice. She was a sweetheart to me. And then who else off the top of my head? Second, second time. I mean, those two were the first two that pop into my head. The second time, a second time, a second time. The thing is, a lot of guys came on more than once. You know, they really, they really did. They came on more than once. I don't know. Those two are the ones that stick out immediately, right? Let's see. Okay. I believe we have one more question. Yes, here we go. For a first-time competitor, is having a coach in person a necessity, or can one get away with an online coach? Well, uh, you know, I'm not big with the online coaches because I really like somebody that I could, you know, see in person. But if it's your first show, I mean, as long as you got the best. In today's day and age, I know, I know a lot of I have a lot of old school guys on, but I truly believe today. I know back in the day, a lot of guys didn't have coaches. Uh, and the, you know, late 80s into the 90s, you know, you talk to Lee Priest and, you know, Jason Owens and they didn't have coaches, Sean Ray. But I believe that today having a second eye is is a good thing, right? Because you need somebody to go, mm, you're a little flat, increase your carbs. You, know, you still got body fat on you, increase your cardio, whatever the case may be. Because I don't think at, at a beginner could look in the mirror and go, oh, I know what I got to do. I, I really don't. So I would always think that some kind of coach, and if you're a beginner, you don't have to, you know, if, if, if it's your first contest and you just kind of want to figure out where you stand, what class you want to be in and how good you really can be and what the competition is like. I, I mean, you could, you can get your, a local trainer, right? Cause you just, you're going to be doing the basics. You don't even know how your body responds yet. You have no, no clue. And then, you know, then if you really are into it, and you really want to like do a national level show, then I would like spend the money on a on a big name, a Fackery, a King Kamali, a whomever, right? Uh, whomever pops in my head. I don't know. That's what that's what I would do. But that does it for all the questions in Anabolic Academy. And this week we're having Kayla Murphy back because she was a great co-host and she was funny and she was beautiful and she was intelligent and um, we had great chemistry as far as co-host and host. So she is coming back and it's going to be more fun than ever. Who else am I having back? I don't know, but that's what's coming up. All right. So you guys like, share, subscribe, and tell everybody about the greatest bodybuilding channel on YouTube. Serious and silliness bodybuilding. All right, guys. Have a good night. Later.